Hello class, today we're going over lesson 6.1 where we're going to learn about translations. So translations are a type of movement that takes place on a coordinate plane, something like this. Remember where we have our X and our Y axis. Remember the horizontal line is your X axis and the vertical line is your Y axis. Basically what a translation is, is if we have a figure or a point on here, so let's say we have this triangle on our X and Y axis, a translation is just going to be the movement of this figure in any X or Y direction on this uh, coordinate plane here. So it basically slides it either left, right, up or down, or if it does both at the same time, and kind of makes a little bit of a diagonal line there. But for an actual mathematical definition here, a translation or a slide is a movement in the X and or Y direction of a figure, and or meaning it can be sliding just left or right, just up and down, or both. So note here, a change in the X coordinate is going to move us in the left and right direction, while a change in the Y coordinate moves us up or down. So to describe this transla translation here, what we use is an arrow notation to write a rule for our translation. So when we have a coordinate such as x comma y, what's going to happen is if we move this or if we go to x plus 4, y minus 2, our x point has to increase by 4 and our y point has to decrease by 2. So looking at this on a figure here, if we look at the point r, if I want to slide my point R here such that X increases by 4 and Y increases by 2, we can do it two ways here. One, we can either plug it into our points, which we'll do later, or we can just graphically show this here. So if I take my point R and I slide 1, 2, 3, 4 spots to the right and 1, 2 spots down, I would get to my new R prime point. So why did I slide 4 spots to the right? Well, that's because we added 4. Remember, adding is something that we would do that would be positive, right? So that's why we're moving in the right-hand direction on my x-axis. Why did I go down 2? Well, my y-coordinate needs to subtract 2 here. So when I went for my point, I went down 2 because subtracting 2 would be something like negative. So we would have to go negative on our y-axis. And this is true for all of our points here. If I take my point S and I go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right and 1, 2 down, I get to my new point S prime. And same with T. 1, 2, 3, 4 and one, two, I get to my new T prime. However, there's another way we can do this. We could do this by simply working with our coordinates. So let's take our um, coordinates in the form X comma Y and let's map them to X minus four and Y minus two. So what I do have to do here is I have to take my original X coordinate, which for F is going to be negative four, and then I am going to subtract two, subtract four. Why am I subtracting 4? Well, it tells us for every point, or every x point, we need to do x minus 4. So my x point is negative 4, so I need to do negative 4 minus 4. Now for my y coordinate, originally it is 5, and my mapping tells us that for every y coordinate, I need to subtract 2. So I need to do 5 minus 2. So this would become the point 4 minus, negative 4 minus 4 would become negative 8, and 5 minus 2 would become 3. For my next point here, again, my x coordinate is negative 4, so I need to do negative 4 minus 4, and my y coordinate is 3, so I need to do 3 minus 2. Negative 4 minus 4 remains negative 8, and 3 minus 2 would be 1. And lastly, I have my point 1, comma 1, so since my x is 1, I need to do 1 minus 4, and since my y is done, I need to do 1 minus 2. 1 minus 4 will give me negative 3, and 1 minus 2 will give me negative 1. All right, so now we can go forward to graphing these points here. So we have the point negative 8, 3. That means I need to go to the left 8 and up 3. So 1, 2, 3 right here. This is going to be my point F prime. F prime just means it's our new F here. My E point is negative 8, 1. So I need to go to the point negative 8 and up 1. It'll be right here. And lastly, negative 3, negative 1. So left 3 and down 1 right here. All right, now we have a new figure here. It is my point F prime, E prime, G prime. And it looks, notice how it looked exactly the same as my old figure, right? So that's something that's true with translations or slides. Whenever we make a new translation or a new figure, our figure is going to be congruent or is going to be the same as our original figure. So this would be the new point here. It would look exactly the same, just slid down, it looks like, in the bottom left direction. 
All righty, we have one more slide here. We want to try out, um, this is on the worksheet if you're doing it. We want to take our x comma y and we want to move them to x comma y minus 3. So let's take the point um, 2 comma 3. Well, since it says just x there, that means my x is going to stay the same. It will remain 2. My y coordinate, I need to do 3 minus 3. Or this is going to become 2 comma 0. For my b coordinate, and my x is going to stay the same. It's originally 3. It's going to stay 3. And my y is going to go to 1 minus 3, which would become 3 comma negative 2. And lastly, I have the point 1 comma 2. So my x is going to stay the same. It's going to stay 1. And my y coordinate is going to become 2 minus 3, which would become 1 comma negative 1. All right, so to graph these points, we're going to go right 2 up 0 right three down two, and right one down one. And these would be my new coordinates or my A prime, B prime, C prime. And notice how they look identical to my original figure, just slid or translated in a different direction. Alrighty, so last things I want to talk about today, our pre-image and our image R. The pre-image is just the original figure. The image is the translated figure. Those are always going to be congruent they are going to be congruent or they're going to be the same. Turns out our corresponding angles are also going to be congruent. They're going to be congruent because the angle measures themselves are not going to change. If you have a 90 degree angle on a right triangle and you map it somewhere else, it will remain a 90 degree angle. And lastly, the corresponding sides are also congruent. So these are the answer of the three questions on that worksheet if you're getting stuck on it. But there we go. Those are our um, slides for today on lesson 6.1. We were learning about slides or translations. Make sure you don't forget to write a two-sentence conclusion on this. And I hope to see you all in class tomorrow. Bye-bye, everyone.